Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. My name is Hasib Ahmed and uh, I'm a student of MSc Honours Animal Nutrition in University of Sagoda. Our today's topic of discussion is Roman Biotechnology. What is Roman Biotechnology? This is the application of knowledge of Roman fermentation and the use in management of both natural and recombinant microorganisms to improve the efficiency of digestion of fibrous feedstuff by Romans. As in ruminants, we offer them fibrous feed larger in a larger proportions than monogastric animals or humans. What are the ruminants? A ruminant is an hooved animal which stomach contains four chambers and it, it digests its food in two steps. The first step is eating raw material, sending it into the stomach and then by regurgitation it is sent back to mouth, chewed again and then it is sent again to the stomach. Example of the ruminants are cattle, buffalo, goat, sheep, giraffe and deer. As you can see, this is an image of digestive tract of a ruminant. It starts from the mouth, then there is esophagus and then the stomach starts. The first chamber is reticulum, second is rumen. Then there is omasum and the last chamber is abomasum. From there the food, the chewed food, digested food enters the intestine, small intestine. Reticulum is the chamber, the first chamber as you can see in the image it looks like a honeycomb. The bolus formation starts from here and it is the, uh, the cud which is the semi chewed food is sent back by regurgitation back to the stomach uh, mouth and it's chewed again and sent back it collects all the harmful foreign objects like nails wires and the chewed food is then sent to the next segment of stomach the next segment is rumen. It's basically a fermentation vat. It contains anaerobic microbes. As you can see in, in the image, there are papillas and the volatile fatty acids are absorbed in the rumen. Then there is omasum. It's called manply. Maniply, sorry. It contains muscular folds, it reduces particle size, and water is retained from this section. Volatile fatty acids are also absorbed here. The herbomasum is the true gastric stomach, it contains, it secretes proteolytic enzymes and gastric digestion starts here. The pH in ebomism is 2.5, kills bacteria and pathogen and it dissolves calcium phosphate. The rumen is home to billion and billions of microbes which contains bacteria, fungi and viruses. As you can see in this diagram, there are different populations of bacteria, fungi, mycoplasma, viruses and there is a comparison with humans of earth.
Rumen is a fermentation chamber as we discussed earlier. Anaerobic process hosts can absorb energetic byproducts from bacterial fermentation and utilizes enzymes produced by rumen microorganisms to digest the ingested food material which benefits both the host and the microorganism. Now we will see which are the microbes found in, found in the rumen, one of which is protozoa, these are the unicellular organisms. They ingest bacteria and feed particles and digest carbohydrates, protein and fats. The number of protozoa are directly affected by the feed we are offering to the animal. This is a picture of a rumen protozoa and tordinium. Then there is fungi, with their number usually low and it digests fiber. There are cellulitic bacteria which digest fiber, they, which is why they are called fiber digesters. They digest cellulose and they require the pH of 6 to 7. They utilize nitrogen in the form of ammonia. They require sulfur for the synthesis of sulfur containing amino acids, which are cysteine and methionine. They produce acetates propionates and a little butyrates and carbon dioxide. Then there are amylolytic bacteria which digest starch and sugars. They require the pH of 5 to 6. They also utilize nitrogen as ammonia or peptides. They also produce propionates, butyrates and lactate. Rapid change to grain diet causes lactic acidosis, which rapidly decreases pH and affects the colonies of the microorganisms. Then there are methane producing bacteria. They produce methane, which is utilized by the microbes for energy, and they are released, the produced methane is released from the body by eructation or burping. Now how we can improve the forage quality? There are two methods to it, pre-ingestive methods and post-ingestive methods. Pre-ingestive methods, they by reducing lignin content and increasing fermentable carbohydrates and increasing available proteins and re reducing sec uh, concentrations of secondary compounds, use of exogenous fibrolytic enzymes to improve feed utilization. post synthetic methods are increasing fiber digestion, improving efficiency of nitrogen metabolism, modification of ruminal ecosystem and recombinant ruminal microorganisms. The microflora in the gastrointestinal tract, they also degrade the anti-nutritional factors which is in some cases tannin, they break down tannins, they break down oxalates, they break down fluoroacetates and pyrolyzidine. The gastrointestinal microbes, they produce certain enzymes. These enzymes are used outside the animal like tannase in food and beverage preparation. Uh, they are used as a clarifier in fruit juices and beer. Then there is phytase, which is also a feed additive in monogastric animals to increase phosphorus availability. The lactobacillus species for disease treatment as probiotics. The 
conclusion of all this discussion is basically why microflora is so important and what is their benefits. Basically they provide a natural barrier for controlling the entry of enteric pathogens into the human food chain. In various industries, the byproducts of these microflora are utilized as we discussed earlier, tannase and phytase. And they can also enhance the economy of developing countries like improving their own production. They also uh, enhance the milk production and they can help in exports as well in the form of certain enzymes. Thank you for your attention.